Now let us discuss the questions which have come in the recent year exams in INISET, uh, NEET, AIMS, etc. in the last few years from the topic of traumatology. The first question match the following this came in in set 2020 that in one part of the column they were giving weapons or mechanism and the other injury x uh, a ta blade and lati and on the other column we have incised wound tram track bruise creased abrasion and chop wound all right so obviously x will produce see x and blade these are sharp cutting weapon right these are weapon having sharp cutting edges sharp weapon on the other hand, RTA usually produces blunt, blunt injuries, usually. It is usually due to blunt trauma. And LATI also is a blunt weapon. So, out of these, incised wound is produced by sharp cutting. Similarly, chop wound is produced by sharp cutting. The only difference being that in chop wound, the weapon has to be heavy. Okay, if the weapon is heavy, then only uh, chop wound can be produced. So, obviously, here we have that X will produce D, chop wound, 1 is D, 2, RTA will produce uh, grazed abrasion, right, RTA will produce grazed abrasion where the body will be grazing on the surface. This is a type of a secondary injury, okay. So, it is obvious that uh, road traffic accident will produce grazed abrasion while blade will produce an incised wound and lati will produce a tram track bruise. In a tram track bruise, the lati hits the surface and uh, we see that there are bruises on two parallel bruises. All right. So, this is the answer 1 D, 2 C, 3 4, uh, 3 A and 4 B. Moving on to the next question. What is shown in the image? This is image based question which also came in in set 2020 and you can see that uh, questions related to traumatology can either be image based and uh, they are very important. Okay. So, we have to deal with traumatology in a very systematic manner. So, what image is this? This is showing, this is showing different dots, right? This is showing different dots. So, obviously, this is not Joule burn. What happens in Joule burn? It is produced by electrocution, all right? And uh, it does not look like this. Exit wound of what? That was not specified. Shotgun wound. Shotgun wound produces pellets. There are several pellets which enter into the body. And if the shotgun, if the firing is at a distance of more than 2 meter, where the dispersion already starts, all right, where the dispersion of the pellets has already started, if the distance between the target and the shotgun is more than 2 meter, then these pellets will be dispersed. And if it is more, 4 meter or more, then they will be completely dispersed. All right. So, this is a case of shotgun wound. This is the answer. Right. Tattooing is something which we can see in case of entry wound of a rifled firearm. We do not see tattooing in a shotgun wound. So, this is nothing but shotgun wound from a distant range. Shotgun wound from distant range that is more than 4 meter. All right. Next, identify the injury in this image. Again, an image based question which came in AIMS 2020. This image which you see has got, how will you describe this image? This image has got rough irregular margins. It has got irregular margins and underlying you can see crushed, underlying you can see crushed blood vessels and also crushed, crushed hair bulb, crushed hair bulb. So, based on this, we can say that this is a lacerated wound. An incised wound will not produce this and a chop wound will produce clean cut, mar clean cut margins. A chop wound will produce clean cut margins. So, the answer is lacerated wound B. Next, paradoxical undressing is seen in AIMS 2019. Hypothermia, hypothermia, tattooed poisoning and sexual offense. Paradoxical undressing is something which is associated with hypothermia. When a patient suffers from hypothermia, generalized hypothermia, the, uh, the thermoregulatory system which occurs by hypothalamus in hypothermia, the thermoregulation by hypothalamus is not done properly, okay, is not done properly and as a result, the patient, uh, the patient will feel warm. In spite of being in hypothermia, the patient will feel warm and that is why the patient will start opening his dresses. And that is known as paradoxical undressing. And the scene of crime may look as if it is a case of sexual offence. But in sexual offence, there may be undressing, but it won't be paradoxical. Alright. So, paradoxical undressing is seen in case of hypothermia. 
Now comes an assertion reason types question. The assertion statement is range of shot can be determined by spread of pellets. So pellets are related to shotgun wounds. We have already discussed it. So it's obvious that yes, range of shot can be determined by spread of pellets, depending on whether the uh, shotgun is half choked, full choked or three-fourth choked. There are different formula for that. So yes, this is true. Range of shot can be determined by spread of pellets. True. Next. Shotgun reason. Shotgun cartri cartridge contains pellets. The reason is shotgun cartridge contains pellets. That is true. This is also true. So both assertion and reason are correct. But shotgun cartridge contains pellets. That is not the reason behind this assertion that range of shot can be determined by spread of pellets. Shotgun contains pellets. That is true. Pellets gets, gets dispersed. That is also true. Okay, there is spreading of these pellets. Now, because of the spreading of pellets, we can assess that yes, this is the range and uh, this dispersion is the reason for range determination of range of shot, not because there are pellets, right? So, the answer is both assertion and reason are correct, but reason is not the correct explanation of uh, uh, the assertion. This is the right answer. Here, the reason should be that the pellets of a shotgun gets dispersed okay depending on the range so if that reason statement would have been there then this would have been the correct answer next bullet wipe bullet wipe term is used for aims 2019 question bullet wipe is the term we use for to mention the dirt or the grease or the metals which are present inside the barrel okay so this is also referred to as the bullet wipe is also actually responsible for production of the grease color right when a bullet uh, is fired from a gun there is some grease or wipe the grease inside the barrel is wiped by this bullet and that appears as a grease color okay so the answer is bullet wipe term is used for the option dirt from barrel not the other three Blackening, tattooing and gutter fracture of skull will not be producing this. In gutter fracture of skull, there is a, if a, this is a skull, then a bullet, if it grazes against the skull without entering it, then there will be a small depression, small depression. That can be known as bullet graze, but not as bullet wipe. Moving on to the next question. True about pugilistic attitude. This was asked in Ames 2018. Pugilistic attitude, what is it? It is uh, produced in, in case of a thermal injury due to burn and there is contraction of proteins, contraction of proteins. Now, this is a non-specific sign of pugilistic attitude is a non-specific sign of thermal injury. What does that mean? That whether this burn was non-specific sign, whether this burn was anti-mortem or post-mortem, that cannot be differentiated by a pugilistic attitude. In all cases of burn, we always find pugilistic attitude, right? So it cannot differentiate between anti-mortem versus post-mortem burns. So option A, indicate only anti-mortem burn, no, indicate only post-mortem burn, no. C, cannot differentiate between anti-mortem and post-mortem burn. That is the answer. Fourth option, indicates defense by victim during anti-mortem death. No, that will produce defense wounds or that may be seen as struggle marks. Right, so that's the answer of this question. Next, identify the type of abrasion. Again, a recent image-based question. What is this type of abrasion? What are the types of abrasion we have? P, I, G, S, pressure, imprint, graze and scratch. Out of this, the commonest is graze and this is how it looks, okay? This is a typical appearance of a grazed abrasion. As if the body has been uh, grazed on the surface. This can be, this type of injury is typically seen after an RTA. So the answer is graze, okay, next. Bullet fingerprinting. What is bullet fingerprinting? We have already discussed this that to identify a bullet, we need to see the markings. There are two types of markings in a bullet. What are the two types of markings? The primary markings and the secondary markings, which produce typical marks on the body of the bullet as the bullet is being fired from the firearm. So that bullet has got some markings. So it can be primary and secondary. What is the difference between these two? Primary marking is uh, it defines the class characteristics class characteristics that means see uh, if 100 guns are produced from the same factory then all the uh, guns all the bullets which are fired from each of these gun will have the same primary markings there will be no difference okay so from this we can categorize that from which factory 
these bullets, uh, these guns have been produced and which have fired the bullet. Okay. Now, what is secondary marking? When a bullet is being fired from a firearm, then inside the barrel we have some grease which produces the bullet wipe or the grease collar we just discussed. So, that leads to formation of specific secondary markings on the body of the bullet. And this is responsible for individual identification of the guns. Okay. So, individual identification of guns is possible by this secondary marking. So, once we, uh, once we uh, get a bullet from a scene of crime, we have to take, take it and send it to FSL ballistics department where they check whether this uh, bullet was fired from this gun or the another gun and there they use a comparison microscope. So, by that, that by if we find secondary markings, then that will be the typical bullet fingerprinting as if I am identifying the bullet just like fingerprinting of a human being. Next, identify this image. Again, an image based question. There are a lot of image based questions from this topic on traumatology and all these images have been covered in the video lectures. So, what sort of a fracture are we seeing here? We are seeing that uh, as if a line has gone from this end and it has gone on to the other end of the skull from one end of the skull to other end of the skull. This is a basilar fracture. And what is this type of fracture? This is known as a hinge fracture or also known as motor cyclist fracture. Motor cyclist fracture, right? So, the answer is hinge fracture or motor cyclist fracture. Now, how does ring fracture looks like? It encircles the foramen magnum. If a person falls from height and lands on the foot, then the typical injury which will be produced is ring fracture. Comminuted fracture will be appearing like a spider wave. There will be multiple lines emerging from the same point. And depressed fracture will is also known as a fracture a la signature. For example, when the uh, head is hit with a hammer, then the typical uh, injury we see is known as a depressed fracture. Next question, concentric teeth bite marks on forearm. What is to be done next? This question was asked in AIMS 2018. See, teeth bite when a person is bitten by teeth, then there can be different type of injuries. But the most common is bruise from teeth bite. That is the most common type of teeth bite. Apart from this, there can be uh, lacerated wounds, there can be tears, okay, a lot of things can happen. So, from teeth bite, we can identify the person. We can identify the person based on the shape of the teeth, we can make a cast and from that we can uh, assess whether this person is the accused or someone else. And also we can take swabs, we can take swabs and that can be DNA fingerprinting can be done from it. So it is a very good uh, investigation tool for the police. But the first thing which has to be done if you see a teeth bite mark is that you will have to take a photograph, that is the first thing. So first is keep scale for measuring below the mark and take photographs. This is the first thing which is done at the scene of crime by the forensic photographers. Next is a two swab technique for saliva collection is done. After that, a cast can be prepared using vinyl polysiloxane. This can be done next. Skin is removed and preserved. This is usually not done, but this can be done, can be done during autopsy. But definitely not by the, uh, by the police in the scene of crime. This may be done during autopsy if needed. All right. So, that is the answer. Next, next is a very big question. Let us go through it. A middle aged lady was found in a robbed room lying in a pool of blood. On forensic examination, there was an entry wound. This is the key word entry wound of size 2 into 2 centimeter on left temporal region, left temporal region with tattooing and blackening around wound. Okay. So, entry wound 2 into 2 centimeter, tattooing, blackening. So, what is the range? The range is close shot. Okay. It is not a distant shot because the person was standing in the range of both this uh, smoke as well as the unburned gunpowder that is producing tattooing and blackening. Now, there was also an exit wound with beveling at the right temporal region. So, they are giving all these informations. On further examination, two bullet fragments were found inside brain parenchyma. Okay. Which of the following could be used to determine the distance from which weapon is fired? I want to know the distance. So, the options are hair, clothes, bullet fragments, blood. We cannot know the distance from the blood. Bullet fragments can help us to identify which gun the bullets were fired from. Clothes may help us to identify whether there is any tattooing or uh, burning in there or not. 
tattooing, burning, they are or not. But this injury, but this particular injury is on the head. So, no roll of clothes. If this particular injury was on the chest, then we could have preserved the clothes and we could have uh, checked for this burning, singeing, tattooing from the cloth. But if it is in the hair, if it is directly on the body, if it is directly on the body, such as in this question head, no roll of clothes. So, the only option we have left with is hair. How can hair help here? Hair can help because we will see singeing. We will see singeing from the flame, from the flame of the gun. Right. So, hair can be used to identify, to decide the range of the fire. Next, keranu paralysis. This is a term we have discussed that keranu paralysis, keranu pathology, the term keranu pathology, keranu Kiraono pathology, right? The term Kiraono pathology deals with lightning injuries. It deals with lightning injuries. This is not seen in any other condition. Not electrocution, cold immersion, mercury poisoning. Only we see in lightning strike. In electrocution, we may find joule burn. In cold immersion, we will find frostbite. And in mercury poisoning, we may find acrodynia, but not kirauno paralysis. Okay. Next, black powder composition. So, you uh, realize that ballistics is very, very important topic for the examination point of view. Black powder composition is, black powder composition is KCS, that is potassium nitrate, charcoal and sulfur. Now, potassium nitrate acts as the oxidant. So, which actually produces the fire. So, that is why this is present maximum 75 percent. Charcoal helps in keeping the things bound together. So, that helps in binding that is 15 percent that is one fifth of the potassium nitrate and the rest is made by sulphur which is actually the fuel. The this fuel is oxidized by KNO3 and then the gunpowder explodes. So, that is present in 10 percent. This is the composition of black gunpowder right and this is not smokeless gunpowder. So, we have the correct option that is C, 75 percent potassium nitrate, oh sorry, uh, the correct option is D actually that says that 75 percent potassium nitrate plus 10 percent sulphur plus 15 percent charcoal. So, that is the right answer of composition of black gunpowder. Next, a circular bullet wound, erythema seen around margins, blackening and tattooing present. Circular bullet wound with erythema hmm, and also there is blackening and tattooing. So, uh, this person is uh, staying away from the range of flame, right? This person's, if you want to see the location of this person's, how he got injured, this is the flame, this is the smoke, these are the unburned gunpowder, and finally, this is the bullet, all right? The flame will produce, the flame will produce burning and singeing, which is not present here, only erythema is present, which is actually the abrasion color. And next, uh, the, um, uh, this is the flame, this is the smoke, and this is the unburned gunpowder and this is the bullet. So, smoke will produce, smoke will produce what? Blackening and this unburned gunpowder will produce what? Tattooing and this person is standing at a range here, this person is standing here which is away from the range of flame but in between the range of both smoke and uh, this gunpowder. So, that is actually a near, uh, that is actually a, a near shot entry wound near shot entry wound. Okay. This is contact where the gun is in touch with the head. Okay. This is close. This is close when the person has the features of both fire plus uh, smoke plus gunpowder that is close. Right. And this position in this question is near shot and if it is standing further away then that is distant shot. Okay. So, the correct answer here is near shot entry wound. It is not an exit wound because exit wound will not show any of these features. So, from this discussion, we can understand that the main topics in traumatology, which from which the questions have been recently asked in all these exams are the regional injury, specifically the fractures, specifically the fractures. Okay. Next is forensic ballistics. They are asking image based questions about the range of fire and also other relevant topics and also mechanical injury especially the images especially the images of all injuries right so these are the 
important high yield topics which have to be studied. From this, they can ask different type of questions like reasoning, assertion uh, and image based also. We will be discussing about the questions which have come from the topic on thanatology from different aspects in the recent question paper, in the recent exams. Now, what is shown in this image? This picture came in NSET 2020 and this is a favorite area of the examiners and they have repeatedly shown this image or other images of marbling. Okay. What is this? This is typical of marbling. What is that? Marbling is a decomposition feature, decomposition feature which occurs due to breakdown of hemoglobin breakdown of hemoglobin by the bacteria and it produces H2S and that leads to this greenish color. Greenish color, it appears at different times in summers and winters. In summers, it appears by 18 to uh, 24 hours. In winters, it appears by 36 hours and this distribution, this distribution follows vasculature, follows the blood vessels. Right. So, these are the main features of marbling. Now, this typical image is of marbling. What is a filigree burn? It is produced by lightning and it also has a branching pattern. It is also known as a arborescent burn, arborescent mark. It also follows a branching pattern. But the only difference is it does not, it does not follow the blood vessels. This branching pattern, it does not follow the distribution of blood vessels. That is the only difference, right? Next, PM staining or hypostasis, it is the color change which occurs in the dependent parts of the body. It can be of different colors. The most common color is, uh, is a brown, dark brown or purplish brown. Next, carbon monoxide poisoning. In carbon monoxide poisoning, we have cherry red hypostasis. Okay, so this particular image due to these patterns, due to these patterns, it is of <coughs> marbling. Next. Which of the following is present in the image below? Again, a similar question has been asked repeatedly and you can see that there are this purplish or dark red areas on the back of the body. So, what are these areas actually? These are nothing but the dependent portions of the body if the body lies in supine position. Dependent portions when body is in supine position. Right. And these are the areas where the blood gravitates. The blood gravitates and that leads to post-mortem staining, also known as hypostasis or VBCs or circulations. Okay. So, or uh, liver mortis. So, this is nothing but post-mortem staining. And in between, you also see certain areas where there is no stain. Okay. So, these are areas of contact with the ground. Right. These are areas where the body was in contact with the ground and these are the areas which are known as contact flattening or contact pallor. Right. So, this is hypostasis, but the option does not have the, the question does not have the options of hypostasis. So, that is why it is very important to know the synonyms of postmortem staining. Postmortem staining is also known as hypostasis or uh, hypostasis or liver mortis or sagillation or vibesis. So, this is not trigger mortis, this is not algor mortis, this is nothing but sagillations or postmortem stain, right? Marbling, we just showed the image and we have already discussed that. Next question, mark the correct options about the following image. Again, uh, uh, this question came in AIMS 2019 and this is again, as we know, this is marbling. We have discussed that in details and marbling appears by 36 to 72 hours in winter. In summer, it appears earlier. Next, which option is correct? This came in AIMS 2019. Rokitansky, this is about the different methods of dissection of organs during autopsy. A, Rokitansky in situ, B, Virchow en masse, C, Gons in block and D, Little one by one. So, what do we have to know about these different methods? Rokitansky, in the name there is I and N. Okay, Rokitansky, in the name itself, we have got an I and N. So, that is nothing but in situ dissection. This is correct. Where is it Rokitansky means, uh, uh, method done in case of highly infected bodies? For, for example, COVID, for example, uh, HIV, right? 
it is done in this case it uh, the advantage is the infection chances of spreading of the infection to the autopsy surgeon is less then what is work chow's method here the organs are removed one by one just like chow mein. in chow mein we can separate each strands and eat them separately similarly in work chow's method each organ is separated one by one okay and this is not in mass this is one by one organ removal. Advantage is we can study each and every organ in details. Disadvantage is it is time consuming and the inter organ relationship is not properly uh, established. So these are the disadvantages. Next is GONS. GONS method is actually N block. What is done here? Pelvic block. All the organs in the pelvis are removed together. Abdominal block and the chest block. So all the organs inside the chest cavity, lung, heart, these are removed together. Then after that, these are studied separately. Advantage is the inter-organ relationship is very well established and it also is less time consuming as compared to Varkos. But the disadvantage is that each and every organ cannot be studied in full details. Right. So GONS is N block. So this is also correct and this is also correct. But B is wrong. And what is Letul's? Letul's is large mass. Letul's is a large mass is removed together. Okay, so that is known as N, N mass, right? So in the options we have that B and A and C are correct. A and C are correct. This is the answer. Rocky Tansky and Gone, uh, these are the correct options. Next, match the following columns. So these you see again there is an image based question related to all the images of post-mortem changes. So option 1 is marbling. We have already discussed this. Option B is adipocere. The body is showing a typical whitish greasy appearance. So that is adipocere. Then this is marbling. The body is appearing to be shrunken, shriveled up shrunken, shriveled up. So this is mar uh, mummification, sorry, uh, this is mummification. And the last one we have already seen that is post-mortem staining, post-mortem staining also known as liver mortis, all right, where there is uh, blood gravitating in the dependent parts of the body. So we have, now if I want to match it with this, the last option which was given is mummification. So if I want to match it, these two columns, then A will be 3, B will be 1, C will be 4 and D will be 2. So in this question, the correct answer is option B, that is A3, B1, C4 and D2. Next question, identify this image. This has been again asked and the same image has been given. This is nothing but post-mortem staining. Post-mortem staining, also known as sagillation or VBCS or liver mortis post-mortem stain. Next, next question is, according to Nisten's rule, which of the following is the correct sequence of appearance of rigor mortis? This has been asked in AIMS 2017. What is Nisten's rule? Nisten's rule discusses the appearance and disappearance of rigor mortis from the body. So it states that rigor mortis starts from the center and goes to the periphery. So it starts from the eyelid, then it goes to the jaw muscle, or the muscles of face in general, then it moves on to the neck, then chest, then goes to the upper limb, then abdomen, and then finally finishes in the lower limb. This is the order of appearance of rigor mortis. Rigor mortis appearance. And also, this is the same order of disappearance of rigor mortis. This is the same order of disappearance, disappearance of rigor mortis. This is ex how the rigor mortis also disappears from the body. So it first can be seen in jaw muscle. Jaw muscle is the area which we first uh, establish. Eyelid is obviously right, but during autopsy, we first uh, uh, move, try to move the jaw muscle and if it is present in the jaw muscle, that means rigor mortis has started. Okay, and it is still present. And it is, uh, if it is not present in the upper limb, but present in the lower limb only, that signifies that the rigor mortis is ending. Okay. And there is also rule of 12, rule of 12, which discusses about how the uh, uh, rigor mortis is established by 12 hours, then it stays for 12 hours, and by the next 12 hours, it disappears. So that is a rule of 12. So in this case, the answer is orbiculus oculi, then facial muscles, then jaw, then neck, then upper limb. So this is the answer, orbiculus oculi followed by facial muscle, jaw, neck and upper limb. See the other options do not follow this particular direction. So that is the instance rule. Next, 
method of autopsy in which various system organs uh, various system organs are removed in mass uh, this has been uh, already discussed so in mass dissection is known as littles or large block dissection all the organs are removed together next question during autopsy stomach incision is done after stomach incision is done after stomach uh, we have to remove the stomach to check for the presence of any poisons or any particular change in the stomach mucosa so if this is the stomach then how is it removed two different ligatures are given at the two ends two ligatures are given at the two ends and then and then the stomach is cut in between these two ligatures the stomach is cut in between these li two ligatures and then removed so this is known as the double ligation technique because two ligations are being given at both the ends at the cardiac end and the frontal end so that's why this is known as a double ligation technique and after removal the stomach is uh, dissected the stomach is opened stomach is opened along the greater curvature stomach is opened along the greater curvature because in lesser curvature there is a passage known as Magenstrasse and that is the route which is followed by poison poison goes by this route so that's why we want to preserve it and that is why this method is known as double ligation method next question which of the following is not correct about postmortem changes in general all the postmortem changes have been covered and this has been discussed in details in this chapter so the we know that the pm lividity fixes at 6 to 8 hours yes this is true postmortem lividity fixes at 6 to 8 hours and that is known as primary fixation so if the body's position is changed within the 6 hours then as the dependent portion of the body changes then lividity's location will also change Rigor mortis occurs when ATP decreases up to 85% of normal. Yes, this is also true. Rigor mortis starts when ATP is, uh, start decreasing and it starts when ATP value reaches 85% of the normal. And it continues and it continues up to when ATP values are 15% of normal. Okay. Next, Rigor mortis is delayed in cholera and strychnine poisoning. No, Rigor mortis is not delayed. It rather comes early. Rigor mortis comes early in cholera and strychnine poisoning. Why? Because in cholera, the body is already, uh, the, the ATP of the body is, has already been depleted because this is a disease, it's a wasting disease and the person is already in a uh, disease condition. And next in strychnine poisoning, as there is already convulsions, so most of the muscles ATP are already destroyed. So that's why Rigor mortis comes early in both these situations. Next, cadaveric spasm is instantaneous at the time of death. Yes, cadaveric spasm appears immediately after death. There is no primary relaxation prior to no primary relaxation prior to onset of cadaveric spasm. It starts off immediately after death, unlike Rigor mortis. PM caloricity occurs after 5 to 6 hours death. PM caloricity is the process where normally after death the body's temperature is decreasing. Hmm. We know that it is a sigmoid curve. So normally the body temperature, this is known as algor mortis. The temperature of the body after death it normally decreases. But in postmortem caloricity, for example in strychnine poisoning or in heat stroke, the temperature of the body will immediately increase after death. The body temperature increases after death and it remains increased after death for about 1 to 2 hours. So no, this is not true. So out of this question we have that A, B, C are true. A, B, C are true in this question. Next one. The preservative of a urine sample during autopsies. This has been asked in Jipman in 2020. This is a very recent question and the preservative of urine sample is Thymol. This is used to preserve urine during autopsy. Formalin is used for preservation of samples for histopathological examination. It is never used for preservation of uh, viscera for poison analysis. Sodium chloride is the most common sample which is used for saturated solution of NaCl is commonly used for preservation during uh, to send the viscera to post, uh, poison detection. Poison detection. And rectified spirit that is the ideal that is the ideal preservative to preserve viscera for poison detection. That is the ideal preservative, but it is not followed in all cases. Uh, sodium chloride is preferred. So in this case, the answer is thymol. All right.
blood for blood we use sodium fluoride and also EDTA. Next question. A patient died due to jaundice. What will be the color of corpse after embalming? This has already been, this is a very recent question and this has already been discussed in the chapter. Uh, after embalming, what happens that the embalming fluid due to jaundice, the embalming fluid combines with the bilirubin. There is increased bilirubin in the body and the embalming fluid which contains formalin mainly out of all the constituents. So, this formalin combines with bilirubin and it produces biliverdin which is green in color and as this biliverdin is green in color, so the body will appear green. So, if you do uh, embalming, uh, what is embalming? Embalming is the process of preservation of the dead body for cosmetic purposes and their embalming fluid is injected and this embalming fluid contains different constituents which have been discussed in details and out of that formalin is present, it, uh, uh, it reacts with the bilirubin which is present in the body in case of a jaundice patient and these two combine and produce biliverdin which is green, so the answer is green. Next, again uh, in the same year another question was asked from embalming in the Jipmar question and that is why the topic is very important and it has been covered in details already. While performing embalming, difficulty is encountered due to arterial system problem. How should the embalming fluid be introduced to overcome this problem? See, embalming is done by different methods and the most common method preferred is arterial embalming. Arterial embalming. What happens? It can be done through common carotid artery or also through femoral artery also through femoral artery. This is most common, this is preferred and embalming fluid is injected using a motor, injected using motor and it can be continuously injected, continuously drained off or continuous injected, discontinuous draining or discontinuous injection, discontinuous draining and the best method is discontinuous injection followed by discontinuous drainage. This is the best method. And due to our for formation of clots uh, in the arterial system, a problem is encountered. And to remove that, what is done is the, uh, the flow which is done, the embalming fluid is introduced into the body, the flow is done in high pressure, high pressure so that all these clots can be removed and also low velocity. Now why is that needed? So that it increases the tissue perfusion so that it increases the tissue perfusion. So, embalming fluid is introduced into the body by arterial embalming method using high pressure to remove the clots and by low velocity to increase the tissue perfusion. So, that is the answer high pressure low velocity option D. Next, during cranial autopsy facial incision is started at. We all know that during cranial autopsy facial incision is started from the tip of mastoid process, tip of one mastoid process and the incision is given like this and it is followed to the tip of the other mastoid process tip of one mastoid process to the tip of other mastoid process. So, the answer is behind ear loop that is where the incision is given. Next, pyrogalol test is used to diagnose. What is pyrogalol test? This is a test which can be used to diagnose ear embolism, ear embolism. How does it, uh, how, how does it occur? In ear embolism, there is, you will find air inside the, uh, inside the heart, inside the cardiac cavity. So, whenever the vessels are opened, it is done under water and if we see bubbles escaping, that confirms air embolism. Now, if these bubbles are then uh, a pyrogalol solution is reacted with these bubbles, then there is a color change and the color change is brown. The pyrogalol reaction, the pyrogalol reagent is colorless and it gets changed to brown color. So, that is why pyrogalol test is used to diagnose air embolism, that is the answer. For stillbirth, we have the hydrostatic test. For stillbirth, we have the hydrostatic test. Next, in block dissection of organs, again a same question from the same topic. In block dissection of organs is which autopsy method? In block is Gons method. Right. Next, again in JIPMA 2018, a same question came, in block dissection and organ separation are done by, again, Gons method. Letul's is uh, in, in large mass, Rokitansky is in situ and Varchow is one by one. What is the earliest definite site of external putrefaction? What is the earliest definite site of external putrefaction? External putrefaction first starts from the right iliac fossa, from the right iliac fossa. Why? Due to presence of bacteria, due to presence of intestinal bacteria and this bacteria 
starts to form H2S and that gives a typical greenish color and this is first visible in the right iliac fossa region. So that is the first area where external putrefaction starts. In a dead body, bloating of face, tongue protrusion were noted along with the following finding again an image of marbling. See they may use this image or any other images of marbling but in all the images of marbling you will see this particular branching pattern you will see this particular branching pattern along with along with uh, the branching pattern following the vasculature. So whatever images they give just see whether there is already decomposition changes in the body and whether there is branching pattern and if it is following the blood vasculature or not. If it is this then it is definitely putrefaction. In none of the other three conditions electrocution, crocodile burns or scales you will not find this sort of an image you will not find. Next, which of the following is not used as a preservative in chemical analysis? We have already discussed this in preservative in chemical analysis. Why is chemical analysis done? To detect poisons, to detect poisons. So the ideal solution, uh, the ideal solution for poison detection is rectified spirit. That is the ideal. Salt solution SS of NaCl, that is saturated solution of NaCl, that is the most commonly used, most commonly used. and Glycerin is used for embalming purpose while formalin is used for histopathology for reservation of organs for histopathology. Formalin is never used. Formalin is never used for the preservation of organs for poison detection. So that is the answer formalin. Next, Rigor mortis is first seen in NEET 2019. We know this from the Nistens law and Rigor mortis is first seen in the eyelids all right externally but internally this is the external right but internally it starts with the heart internally it starts with the heart okay with the aorta with the walls of aorta so because it is just say says in the question rigor mortis is first seen in both of these options are correct externally by eyelids but internally by heart but internal rigor mortis starts earlier internal starts earlier than external that is why in this question the answer is heart. The heart walls, the intima of aorta that will show the first rigor mortis changes. Next, which is the first organ to putrefy? We have discussed about the, uh, about the order of putrefaction of organs and it starts with the larynx. It starts with the larynx, then trachea, then uh, goes on to the uh, brain, heart, lung, kidney then finally the prostate in males and non gravid uterus in females then the skin the muscles and finally the bones okay so which is the first organ to putrefy the first organ to putrefy in all this thing is heart and prostate is the last organ to putrefy what is the smell of mummified body Mummification is a post-mortem change, it is a modified post-mortem change where the body becomes dry and shriveled up. When does it occur? It occurs if the environment is hot and there is air flow. In this situation, the entire body shrivels up and it is odorless. It is odorless, there is no odor. So where do we find odor? In case of adipose hair. In case of adipose hair, the body has a sweet rancid smell. Alright, so this is odorless, that is the answer. So we see that in this particular topic of thanatology, the high yield areas are organ dissection and organ removal techniques, organ dissection techniques, then all the post-mortem changes, all the post-mortem changes, especially their images. Then also we have seen that uh, uh, rigor mortis specifically, rigor mortis specifically and uh, liver mortis specifically. These are very important topics and decomposition especially marbling. Okay, so these are the high yield areas and the questions will probably again be asked from these areas. Now we will be discussing the questions which have come from the entire topic of medical jurisprudence, Indian court procedures, legal sections in the recent years examinations. First. While doing hysterectomy after informed consent for uterine fibroid, ureter is damaged intraoperatively. Ureter is damaged while doing the operation for hysterectomy. Doc 
doctor is not responsible under which doctrine? Here, the doctor did not intentionally damage the ureter. Okay, it was a case of medical malocurrence. It was a case of medical malocurrence while doing treatment. So, it was a therapeutic malocurrence. All right. So, that is the correct action, uh, correct answer here. Novus actus intervenience means a new act intervening. That is not applicable in this case. Physician error, error is error of judgment or error of diagnosis or error of diagnosis. So, that is also not applicable here. And recipes allocator is the thing speaks for itself. For example, if during uh, this operation, the doctor left behind a gauge piece inside the abdomen. So, that would have been the recipes allocator. So, here the answer is medical malocurrence. Next. A doctor takes consent before surgical procedure and also may go beyond the consent if he feels the, uh, the need for patient's benefit. This is known as the doctrine of extended consent. As in, suppose the doctor has taken consent for uh, cholecystectomy and during operation, he finds that there is some damage to the uh, bile ducts as well. So, he can also repair that along with cholecystectomy. Okay. This is known as the concept of extended consent, where consent can be extended to improve the patient, improve the patient's condition. A new situation can also be included here. What is conjugated consent? There, the doctor can conjugate two procedures together while doing the same operation. Okay, but here again, it has to be for the benefit of the patient. Recipes allocator is where the uh, thing speaks for itself. It's a negligence. There is no defense in this case. And doctrine of anticipation is <clears throat> when the doctor expects that there can be some damage. So, damage, expecting that damage, the doctor is giving a cure beforehand. For example, after, uh, after an operation, the doctor is expecting that this patient may have a long-term infection. So, that is why the doctor is giving some uh, two antibiotic coverage. So, that is the doctrine of anticipation. So, here the answer is doctrine of extended consent. First hand knowledge. First hand knowledge refers to the opinion of common witness. First hand knowledge. The first hand knowledge is applicable to the common witness, eyewitness, hearsay witness, but the others are all expert witnesses. For expert witnesses, the first hand knowledge rule does not apply. All right, it does not apply. This has been detailed in discuss, discussed in details. In case of professional misconduct, patients' records on demand should be provided within patients demand records on demand should be provided within three days. Okay, as per the MCI regulations, as per the MCI regulations, inpatient hospital records, inpatient hospital records have to be preserved for three years minimum three years minimum and three to five years and on demand if there is some demand from the patient's relatives then these records have to be produced to be produced within three days all right if there is any mlc case then that uh, record has to be preserved indefinitely has to be preserved indefinitely. There is no time limit for this. All right, that record has to be preserved indefinitely. All right. Principle of confidentiality. The principle of confidentiality does not apply in case of therapeutic privilege. Therapeutic privilege. Here, the principle of confidentiality does not apply and that is applicable in criminal cases. In criminal cases, when uh, there is uh, the doctor is summoned to court under section 39 CRPC, then the doctor has to reveal the identity or the details of the patient to the court when asked questions. So, the principle of confidentiality does not apply in this case. In all the other cases, the professional secrecy has to be maintained. Professional secrecy has to be maintained. Written statement by a dying person signed under oath before magistrate. Written statement by a dying person signed under oath before a magistrate. This is known as the dying deposition. In dying declaration, there is no oath, no lawyer is present and magistrate may be present or may not be present, right? So, that is dying declaration. That is the one which is followed in India. Dying deposition is not followed in India. So, all these processes, all these processes, oath, lawyer, magistrate, all these processes are to be followed in case of deposition, where is declaration, dying declaration, None of this is followed. Okay. So, the answer is dying deposition. 
Next question. Punishment for insulting modesty of a woman. Punishment for insulting the modesty of a woman comes under section 354 IPC, which has got subsections A, B, C, D. Which has got subsections A, B, C, D. Right. Section 375 deals with the, it defines rape. It is the definition of rape. Section 376 is the punishment of rape. Section 506 deals with eve teasing. Section 509 deals with a committing public nuisance. Public nuisance such as exhibitionism. Okay. So, three, outraging the modesty, insulting the modesty of a woman comes under section 354 IPC and also under 506 IPC, even it is if it is. Bolam's test. Bolam's test is a test, it is also known as the law of tort. Whenever there is any allegation for negligence, then that negligence, whether the negligence allegation holds or whether it is not holding, whether uh, the culpability cannot be proved, that is tested by Bolam's test. So, that is a test for medical negligence, that is a test for contributory negligence and that is a test for also negligence by patient. Uh, that is not a test for negligence by patient. In both medical negligence and contributory negligence, Bolam's test can be done. Other tests for negligence are, other tests for negligence are, Bolitho test, apart from Bolam's test, Bolitho test and Montgomery tests. Montgomery test. These tests are also done to test for the medical negligence. IPC section punishing adultery. IPC section punishing adultery is section 497 IPC, which has now been decriminalized. It has now been decriminalized. So, that deals with adultery. 302 deals with homicide punishment of homicide, 498 is the punishment for domestic violence, 498 is the punishment for domestic violence. Next, subpoena is a legal document, subpoena or summons that is a legal document, it is not a medical legal or a medical or FIR, it is a legal document which, uh, uh, which instructs a person to be attending court. Murder. Murder is a serious offence. A serious offence. As a serious offence, it is cognizable. It is cognizable. It is non-compoundable. Murder is cognizable. That means that the person can be arrested without warrant. A person can be arrested without warrant by the police. Then it is non-compoundable. That means that the two parties, that the two opposite accused and the defence parties, they cannot settle things out of the court. No out of court settlement is allowed. A court case has to be done in this case. And it is a non bailable offence. It is a non bailable offence, right? No bail can be granted, the person will, be have, will have to be taken to prison. So, option A cognizable, non compoundable, and non bailable. This is the correct option. Patient died during surgery under anesthesia. Which among the following applies for surgeon? When a patient is dying during surgery, it is a case of negligence. It is a case of negligence. So, it will be done by an inquest and inquest has to be done. Here, inquest is done by police. Police inquest in, is done in these cases. Okay. So, as a result of that, here the answer will be 174 CRPC, where a police inquest needs to be done. 176 IPC is for magistrate inquest. And 39 CRPC is that any crime, any crime has to be reported to police. The next question is, what is living will? This came in JIPMA 2018. What is living will? Living will is the written consent that the patient, when the patient is in conscious state, is a written consent when the patient is in conscious state, especially regarding the terminal life care options. Terminal life care options. Okay, it is written prior to incapacitation, terminal life care options and this is similar to do not resuscitate. Okay, this is similar to do not resuscitate but it has to be a written consent. In compos mentis state. Okay, next, maximum duration within which a consumer should initiate dispute case is known as limitation period and that is one year. This is known as limitation period. This principle is known as res indicata. There is an indication that within this limitation period, a case has to be filed by the patient, patient's relatives for negligence against the doctor. 
द ओनर्स ऑफ प्रूफ इन सिविल नेग्लिजेंस केस अगेंस्ट अ डॉक्टर लाइज विद द पेशेंट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ नेग्लिजेंस इज दैट द डॉक्टर इज नेग्लिजेंट दैट हैज टू बी प्रूव्ड बाय द पेशेंट ऑल राइट सो द ओनर्स ऑफ प्रूफ इन द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ द एक्ट ऑफ विटनेस गिविंग फॉल्स एविडेंस गिविंग फॉल्स एविडेंस अंडर ओथ दैट इज नोन एज परजुरी दैट इज नोन एज परजुरी एंड दैट इज पनिशेबल दैट इज पनिशेबल बाय सेक्शन 193 आईपीसी that is defined by 191 and it is punishable by 193 ipc all right this has come in the recent year so perjury defined by 191 and punishment is given by 193 ipc 197 ipc is about the punishment for issuance of false medical certificate and the punishment is 7 years imprisonment 7 years imprisonment The next question is punishment of perjury. Again, I repeat question. The punishment is given by one ninety three, while uh, section one ninety one is the definition. This is the punishment of perjury. Next, the correct declaration with the respective intended purposes are declaration of Oslo. Oslo deals with abortion. This is this was a multiple choice. Uh, Oslo deals with abortion. This is true. Declaration of Helsinki. Helsinki declared uh, is about human experimentation. H for H. Human experimentation. Hippocratic oath is now given by the Geneva Declaration. What Geneva? This and Geneva Declaration deals with Hippocratic oath. Tokyo. T for T. Tokyo deals with torture. Declaration of Sydney. It discusses about brain death and declaration of Lisbon. It gives a lists of patient rights. So this is also true. So only this option is wrong. Declaration of Helsinki is about human experimentation let us discuss about the questions which have come from the topic of identification this is a very very important chapter uh, high yield area and lots of questions have been asked on this area body segments of sternum is fused on x ray with fusion of medial end of clavicle medial end of clavicle fuses at the age of 25 years medial end of clavicle fuses at the age of 25 years medial end of clavicle fusion also by 21 to 25 years the basis phenoid the basis phenoid fuses with bc occiput okay so here the answer is with uh, as there is fusion of uh, medial end of clavicle the body segments the body segments of sternum body segments of sternum they fuses by 15 to 20 years by 20 years but as the medial end of clavicle has also fused so here the answer is more than 25 years next All are features present in male skull as compared to female skull, except larger teeth is present, larger foramen is present, larger frontal sinus is present, but larger parietal eminence is present in females. In females, they have larger parietal eminence and also they have larger frontal eminence. Otherwise, all the other features are more large in a male skull. Larger frontal eminence. So this is the answer. cephalic index in indian population cephalic index is given by the maximum breadth of the skull maximum transverse breadth of the skull divided by the maximum length of the skull maximum transverse breadth of the skull divided by the maximum length of skull this is for race determination and as per the cephalic index there are three races dolichocephalic mesatecephalic and brachycephalic this is 70 to 75 this is 75 to 80 and this is 80 to 85 and indians are mesatecephalic so indian skull is between 75 to 80 the value for indian skull is 77 okay so the answer is c then true about gustafson's criteria true about gustafson's criteria the gustafson's criteria has got six criteria what are those those are remembered by a p s c r t this has been discussed in details in the chapter a p s s c r t a is for attrition p is for paradentosis s is for uh, a s is for secondary dentin formation c is for cementum apposition r is for root resorption and t is for transparency of root now i out of all this the most important the most uh, reliable criteria is transparency that is the most reliable criteria it is used for estimation of age it is used for age estimation and it is done in dead individuals we cannot do this from live individuals okay so what do we have here true about gustafson's criteria yes it is useful in dead person it is not useful in living person transparency of root is the most important reliable component used for identification of sex no it is used for the identification of age so these three are the correct options next 
Which of the following bone joint epiphysis ossification is used for age estimation in age group 21 to 25 years? As I already said, at 21 to 25 years, there will be fusion of medial end of clavicle and also there will be fusion of basi sphenoid with basi occiput. Basi occiput. So, the correct answer is inner end of clavicle. Ankle, it is for 18 to 19 years. Knee, 17 to 18 years. Wrist is, uh, wrist is also 18 to 19 years. Cephalic index of 80 to 85 is seen with the doligo mesati and brachycephalic. So, it is seen with brachycephalic skulls and brachycephalic skulls belong to the, they are uh, long headed and they belong to the, uh, what is cephalic index? Cephalic index is breadth by length, right? So, in dolicocephalic skull, they have got more breadth. The breadth is more compared to the length, right? That's why they have got a value of 80 to 85. And this is seen in case of mongoloids. This is seen in case of long mongoloids. Studying of sweat gland pores. The study of sweat gland pores is known as poroscopy. This is the study of sweat gland pores. Rugoscopy is the study of a palatal rugi. Dactylography, dactyloscopy is the fingerprints and ageoscopy is the study of the age of the ridges, ridge age. All these are methods for identification of an individual, identification of an individual. Exhumation was done and only skull bone was found with BC occiput and BC sphenoid. So, that has not fused yet, that has not fused yet. So, it fuses, this fuses at age of 25 years. So, as this has not fused, so the approximate age of the individual is 18 to 21 years. And by these years, all the cranial suture, the sagittal, the cranial, these sutures also gets fused. Poroscopy term was coined by Edmund Lockard. Poroscopy term was coined by Edmund Lockard and Edmund Lockard is also famous from the, for the principle of exchange, principle of exchange of materials, Lockard's exchange principle. Whenever two objects come in contact, they always exchange some material. Tattoo is not visible on autopsy, but the presence of tattoo was informed by the relative. What is the next site to check? If the tattoo is present, then the uh, dyes, the dyes for the tattoo, dyes of tattoo, they will be present in the local regional lymph node. And this can be detected under the microscope. Okay. So, if the tattoo is not visible, then the next site to check is the regional lymph node. Identical twins can be differentiated by fingerprint. Identical twins cannot be differentiated by DNA fingerprint. And that is why fingerprinting is a better method as compared to DNA fingerprint. Identical twins cannot be differentiated by age or by blood group. So, this is the answer by fingerprint. Every individual has got a different fingerprint. When does basic occiput fuses with basic phenoid? Again, a repeat question. This fuses at the age of 22 to 25 years. Okay. This fuses at the age of 22 to 25 years. Lockhart's principle is famous for Lockhart's principle is famous for the theory of exchange, and also uh, Lockhart is related with the study of pores, poroscopy. So that completes all the questions from this chapter identification. Let us discuss the questions which have come from the topic of asphyxia. First is an image-based question which came in in 2020. A 22-year-old female with hemorrhage in eyes and neck bruises. There is hemorrhage in eyes, and that is a feature of asphyxia, right? and there are neck bruises. Now, neck bruises as shown in this image, these neck bruises are typically seen in case of throttling, that is manual strangulation. In manual strangulation, externally, externally, we can see bruises on the neck due to application of pressure, okay. So, we can have six penny bruises on neck and internally, and internally we will find congestion. On dissection, we will find congestion of internal neck structures, internal muscles, plus we can also find hyoid bone fracture and the fracture in this case will be inward compression fracture. In ligature strangulation, the uh, ligature mark, there will be a ligature mark and it will be continuous uh, transverse and present low down and in hanging there again will be a ligature mark and it will be seen oblique high up and non-continuous and in drowning the no specific findings will be there on the external neck there will be froth appearing from mouth and nostril 
true about fresh water drowning in fresh water drowning what happens this was a multiple choice option in fresh water drowning what happens this is the alveolus this is the alveolus and this is the blood vessel this is the blood vessel in fresh water drowning the water is hypotonic the water is hypotonic and the uh, blood is hypertonic so water moves out from the alveolus and enters into the blood vessels as a result of this the rbcs become dilated and ultimately they rupture and that leads to hyperkalemia and the patient dies from ventricular failure and also arrhythmia that is what happens in case of freshwater drowning this has been detailedly covered in the chapter so what happens there is hemodilution there will be hemodilution as the blood uh, as all the uh, water will come into blood so there will be hemodilution there will be hyponatremia along with hyperkalemia there is also hyponatremia and there will be arrhythmia and hyperkalemia hypokalemia won't be found here a woman died in her room her room was unlocked her alcohol levels were 350 it is too high and on neck dissection there was contusion present contusion was present in the neck now contusions are externally present we just discussed in case of manual strangulation so it can be present in case of manual strangulation or throttling in cafe coronary we will find a food bolus we will find a food bolus in inside the trachea and obviously the person was intoxicated by alcohol but we will not find in neck contusion in case of alcoholic intoxication and in basdola two bamboo sticks are applied to the neck and there not only contusion will be present but also mark of the bamboo sticks will be present Next question. A teenage girl was found dead in her room and on autopsy the following were found. Images show the appearance of neck on external examination and the image showed presence of bruises, presence of six penny bruises on neck and internally and internally it showed congestion. Internally it showed congestion plus inward fracture of hyoid. So this is a case of throttling. This is a case of throttling where you will find all these features. Lynching. Lynching is when a mob uh, lynches a person. It is an example of a homicidal hanging. It is an example of homicidal hanging. Lynching. Hanging causes large amount of injury to. Hanging causes large amount of injury to carotid artery. And that will produce uh, cerebral anoxia. It may produce injury to vertebral artery trachea to esophagus, but the chances uh, it requires more pressure to exert damage to these structures. The chances of the carotid artery being injured is far more. Drooling of saliva, drooling of saliva is pathognomonic of anti-mortem hanging. It is considered to be the pathognomonic of anti-mortem hanging. For example, if the knot is on this side and the head tilts to this side, there will be drooling of saliva. And this saliva can be tested by Fadeba's stain. It is not typical of post-mortem hanging or throttling or strangulation. This is typical of anti-mortem hanging. So these are the questions which have come from the chapters on asphyxia. And you see that the different types of uh, images, the different images of uh, strangulation, especially manual strangulation is very, very important. Let us discuss the questions which have come from the entire topic of sexual jurisprudence. These questions have come from sexual offense, infanticide, virginity, pregnancy, delivery, abortion. So let's discuss about them. First question which came in to 2020. A 13-year-old female was brought to hospital by parents with alleged history of rape, but they are refusing any examination to be done by doctor. What is this? This is informed refusal. Which things should the doctor do? There, the persons, we have de uh, discussed in details what are the steps in examination of a female victim. First, consent has to be taken and this consent will be for medical examination, medical legal examination and also evidence collection. Once it is collected, then only the doctor can proceed. So, which things the doctor should do? Here, the doctor can document refusal. The doctor will have to document refusal. That is necessary. He cannot conduct examination without consent because that is punishable and that becomes an assault. Okay. And this examination of female victim is governed by 154 CRPC. That is for victims and for accused, it is 53 CRPC. In case of accused, reasonable force can be used. But here, police has to be informed because it is a crime. As it is a crime, police has to be informed. Collection of swabs is out of the question because the patient has documented refusal. And treatment will have to be provided 
uh, but they are refusing any examination to be done by doctor right so they are also refusing that they won't be examining uh, they won't undergo examination if the patient is not examined then also medical treatment cannot be given by the doctor right so only document the refusal and inform police in this case next uh, again in AIMS 2020, a similar question came. A young girl came to AIMS emergency with her birth date of 31-1-2007. So the age in this female is 13 years. And history of penovaginal penetration by the neighbor as stated by patient. She also said that she gave consent for same and refused for further medical examination. So here the patient is accepting consensual recent penovaginal intercourse and she is documenting refusal. What should, uh, what would you do? Should not inform police, should counsel mother and daughter, should inform police, should do examination even after reasonable force and document the informed refusal. Here, what can the police do? The police, uh, what can the doctor do? The doctor has to inform police as it is a crime. This has to be done. He should counsel the mother and daughter that, uh, see, if the, uh, if the victim here documents refusal, then the evidence cannot be collected and it will go against the victim in the court. So here the doctor should try to at least counsel or make them understand what is the importance of examination. Even after counseling if the patient and the mother still refuses then obviously the doctor cannot do anything. Why is the consent of mother necessary here? Because the victim is less than 18 years. So the consent of mother is very important here. So should counsel mother and daughter, should inform police, should do examination even after reasonable force? No, never because this is a victim. This can be done in case of an accused. Document the informed refusal. Yes, this has to be done. So the answers are 2, 3 and 5 are true. That is the correct answer. An 11 year female in school brought to principal by teacher that she is crying and unattentive and not taking interest in any activity. On further investigation, the girl told that she was inappropriately touched by her uncle at private parts at her home. Principal to inform whom? Principal, it is a 11 year female. Again, less than, uh, it's not an adult. So who has to be informed here? This is a crime. So again, the police has to be informed here. The police's role is to inform the child welfare committee to get an examination done. That is the role of the police. But the parents and the magistrate here are not the persons who need to be informed. The police has to be informed in this particular case. A 16 year old girl comes to a doctor with fractured forearm. She told she tripped and fell but cigarette burns were observed in her forearm. What is this? This is nothing but battered baby, battered child syndrome. Injuries in different uh, areas of the body, different types of injuries and injuries in different ages of healing. So what should be the doctor doing? The doctor has to complete, do a complete physical examination to establish other injuries as well, to establish other injuries as well. That needs to be done. To inform higher authorities, why? Because there is no indication here. That need not be done. To tell or discuss with colleague that she is a case of abuse. This should not be done because professional secrecy has to be maintained. Professional secrecy has to be maintained. So this should not be done. To call local social worker for help, this is the role of the police. This is not the role of the doctor. The doctor's role is to do complete physical examination, to document the injuries and then to inform the police. And then the rest will be taken care of. An 18 year old girl, uh, girl was brought to OPD, labia majora was separated, labia minora was flabby, foreshade tear was present and vagina is roomy. So all these are features of a uh, female who has experienced sexual intercourse. So these are uh, features of a non-virgin. But hymen is intact. So when does this occur? This occurs in case of a false virgin. We get the hymen to be intact but all other features are that of a non-virgin. So here the answer is a false virgin. Next, according to PROXO, that is according to prevention of protection of children from sexual offence, all of the following are aggravated sexual offences except. Which are aggravated sexual offences? Gang rape. Okay, rape by threatening. Uh, rape by threatening is not a uh, aggravated sexual offence. Rape by police officer, custodial rape, rape during communal violence. That these three are all aggravated sexual offence. While rape by threatening is not an aggravated sexual offence, it is an sexual offence only. But as per PROXO. A 14 year old rape victim was brought to hospital with 22 weeks of pregnancy. After 20 weeks of pregnancy, after 20 weeks of pregnancy, abortion cannot be done. It, if it at all is to be done, it is to be done by the formation of a board as per provision of the court. 
All of the following are correct statements regarding the case, except vaginal swab need not be taken. Vaginal swab is taken if in case of any allegation or, uh, of sexual offence, but that has to be done within three to seven days, uh, within three days, as close as possible. And here, the rape victim already has a pregnancy, so there is no role of doing a vaginal examination. Fetus can be aborted after her consent. No, fetus cannot be ex uh, aborted without her consent. Fetus cannot be uh, aborted without her consent. Here, as the patient is uh, already pregnant, the vaginal swab need not be taken. That is true. And the fetus can be aborted after her consent. No, this cannot be done. And uh, also, the patient is 14 year old. The patient is 14 year old, less than uh, less than 18. So she cannot give consent. Cannot give consent for abortion. For that, she has to be an adult. All right. Examination can be done by a male doctor with a female uh, attendant. No. Examination uh, examination can be done by a female doctor with a female attendant. Ideally, the examination has to be done by a female doctor. But if a female doctor is not available, a male doctor can do the examination with a female attendant. That is also true. Urine pregnancy test is not necessary. Obviously, not necessary because the female is already pregnant and there is pregnancy inside. So, there is no test to need to do any urinary pregnancy test. This is also true. So, the only option which is correct is fetus can be aborted after her consent. This is false. Next, irresistible sexual desire in males is known as satiasis. Satiasis. This is the irresistible sexual desire in females. Irresistible sexual desire in uh, females is known as nymphomania. That is nymphomania and satiasis is in males. Frigidity is importance, importance in females and coat hank is when a person is particularly important, when a person is important for a particular partner, important for particular one person, that is known as importance coat hanks. IPC for infanticide punishment. IPC for infanticide punishment is section 312. It is section 315. That is the punishment for infanticide. When the child is killed. 312 is the punishment for infanticide, uh, punishment for attempt to infanticide with the knowledge of mother. With the knowledge of mother. When the abortion is carried out with the mother's knowledge. IPC 312 to 316, these have already been discussed in this chapter and also in the topic of legal sections. So, 312 and 316, these all relate to criminal offence. Offences against children, they can be by POXO. Catamite, who is a catamite? Catamite is a passive sodomy agent who is a minor. That is known as a pet catamite. Passive sodomy of young age. Okay, when it is a passive sodomy in elderly, that is known as gerontophilia. That is known as gerontophilia. Spalding sign. Spalding sign is a radiological sign which occurs due to overlapping of the skull bones, and this can be seen in case of intrauterine death. This can be seen in case of intrauterine death as the brain is liquefying, and that, that's why the two skulls they overlap, and this is known as spalding sign. So that is maceration, intrauterine death or maceration. Which of the following factor is specific for indicating child abuse? In child abuse in battered baby syndrome, we know that there will be posterior rib fracture, there will be variable fractures at multiple sites. These two are specific. These two are specific for child abuse. And apart from these, uh, all there can be fractures in all the long bones, but these two are very, very typical and specific. Which is not a type of hymen? Types of hymen are cribriform, types of hymen is uh, imperforate, fimbriate, septate, annular, but cruciate is not a type of hymen. Cribriform, fimbriate and septate all are different types of hymen. Apart from this, we can have annular hymen, we can have imperforate hymen, but cruciate is not a type of hymen. Which can be used as an egg bolic? An egg bolic is a drug which will produce increased, increased uterine contraction increased uterine contraction and that will lead to abortion and this is done in case of criminal abortion so which can be used as an ecbolic all the irritants so what are the irritants the castor the argot specifically the argot is the irritant which is used for abortion in this particular case the others are not irritants spelling sign is a feature of this is a repeat question and this is a feature of fetal death there is overlapping of skull bones Enzyme that can be traced in semen sample of 8 to 10 weeks. Enzyme which can be traced uh, in semen sample of 8 to 10 weeks. In old cases, we prefer the CPK enzyme. We prefer the CPK enzyme. In recent cases, the acid phosphatase and the LDH can be done. 
but OCPK enzyme is done in case of old cases. Maximum number of times a woman can become pregnant for surrogacy as per the surrogacy regulation bill, the maximum number of times a female can be pregnant is 3. These all topics have been detailed uh, discussed properly during the lectures. Enzyme that can be traced in semen sample of 8 to 10 weeks, this is a repeat question as I already said, it is CPK enzyme. In a child who has been raped, hymen, in a child, in a child the hymen is actually deep seated. The hymen is very deep seated, so it is not easily ruptured, it remains intact, right. So it will be intact because it is deep situated, that is the right option, okay. True regarding battered baby syndrome, what can happen in a battered baby syndrome? There are multiple injuries at different agents, okay. And there are multiple injuries and multiple fractures. There are fractures especially to the ribs, especially to the ribs. And there is a, uh, there can also be subdural hemorrhage, okay, due to shaking of the baby. Superfecundation. Superfecundation means fertilization of two or more, more ova in different intercourses in same menstrual cycle. The same menstrual cycle, there is different intercourse and that's why two different ova have been uh, fertilized by two different sperm. That is known as superfecundation. Superfetation, on the other hand, superfetation means fertilization of more ova, two or more ova in different intercourses in different, in different menstrual cycles. Okay. Posthumous child. Posthumous child is a child who has been delivered after the death of the biological father. After the death of biological father. After the death of biological father, not the mother. Okay. So that is known as a posthumous child. If it is born after death of, uh, has been abandoned by parents, then that is punishable. Which of the following tests show yellow needle shaped crystals? Yellow needle shaped crystals of sperm in picrate can be seen when we do, when we do Barbarios test. Barbarios test shows typical spermine picrate yellow shaped crystals. In Florin's test, we can see choline. We can see choline. This is spermine. And Takayama and uh, Tickman, these are tests for blood, while these are tests for semen. So, these are all the questions which have come from this topic, and we see that specifically battered baby, then signs and signs of infanticide and acts acts related to abortion and then examination examination of victim examination of sexual offense victim that has been the areas from where the questions are coming from recent years let us discuss the questions which have been asked from the topic of forensic psychiatry in 2018, a question was asked, as per Mental Health Care Act, an individual with a known psychotic disorder on treatment, known psychotic disorder on treatment and is not a minor, that is an adult individual, can choose to decide the caretaker and the course of treatment. This is known as advanced directive. This has been provision, has been given by Mental Health Care Act 2017 and this is known as no, advanced directive, where as if the patient is giving the directions for his treatment in advance and the doctor will have to, doctor should keep this in mind, should keep this directive in mind while providing treatment, while providing treatment to an insane person. Next, a person is criminally not responsible for his actions if at the time of doing it by reason of unsoundness of mind is incapable of knowing the nature of the act or that what he was doing is contrary to law or wrong. This is the statement which is given by McNaughton's rule. It has been totally uh, written in the question itself. So McNaughton's rule deals with this particular provision and it is about the criminal responsibility of an insane person. In fact, all these laws, Curran's rule, Durham's rule and irresistible, irresistible impulse test, all these are about the criminal responsibility of an insane person. And in India, this is given by section 84 IPC. On voluntary admission, the maximum number of days a person can be admitted as per Mental Health Care Act, if the person is admitted by himself, then the maximum number of days is 90 days. He can be kept for 3 months maximum. Fear of darkness is called, fear of darkness is called nyctophobia. That is the fear of darkness. Claustrophobia is the fear of closed spaces. Agoraphobia is the fear of open large spaces. All right. McDonald's rule comes under which section? Again, this comes under IPC 84, half mind, as if the person is having a half mind. You see, 4 is half of 8. That is why it is IPC 84. 
So, we see from this topic on forensic psychiatry, we specifically need to know about the rules, McNaughton's rule, section 84 IPC and also about the recent Mental Health Care Act. The provisions of the recent Mental Health Care Act are the high yield areas from this particular chapter. Let us discuss the questions from the topic of toxicology. The first question which came in in 2020, they have given uh, two columns and they have asked to match. The poisons are zinc chloride, chloral hydrate, quinine and potassium carbonate. And they have to know which classification, which group these poisons belong to. So out of these, zinc chloride is an irritant. Zinc chloride is an irritant. So one is B. Chloral hydrate, also known as, chloral hydrate is also known as Mickey Finn, Mickey Finn or knockout drops, knockout drops or chloral hydrate and this is used for stupefying and then this is a type of date rape drug. So, uh, quin uh, chloral hydrate is a stupefying agent. So, 2 is D, quinine is used as an abortificient, 3 is A and potassium carbonate is basically an alkali and that is why it is a corrosive, right. So, this is the correct sequence 1 B, 2 D, 3 A and 4 C. Next question again from INSET uh, 2020, again it is a match the following type of question, the agents and their antidotes, antidotes also there is a list and that is also very important. Ethylene glycol, the antidote of ethylene glycol is fumepizole, alright and also ethanol. Then 2, valproic acid, the, uh, the antidote of valproic acid poisoning is levocarnitine. Hydrofluoric acid, it produces hypocalcemia, so the antidote will be calcium gluconate. And heparin, the antidote is protamine sulfate. So, this is the correct order. Order 1B, 2D, 3A and 4C. Next, which of the following is false, is not true about snake bite management. Snake bite management, the main line of management is ASV, polyvalent anti-snake venom and it is effective against the big four snakes in India, common cobra, common crate, uh, salt scale viper and Russell's viper. And also, we have to do a uh, 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 sensitivity testing. We have to do a sensitivity testing prior to giving this ASV and if the patient goes into anaphylactic shock, we also have to keep atropine and neostic atropine adrenaline ready, right. Now, ASV is main stay of treatment, this is true. For hump nose tweed viper, polyvalent ASV is ineffective in India. No, for hump nose tweed viper also, for also this thing, ASV is effective. So, this is the false answer. Neostigmine and ventilator effort should be uh, given to a patient along with ESV, especially in case of uh, neurotoxic snake bites. Neurotoxic snake bites like Kraith and Cobra, ventilatory support it may be needed because the patient dies due to respiratory failure, due to paralysis of the di diaphragmatic muscles. So, neostigmine and atropine should be given for Kraith bite. This is also true. The only option which is false is this one. For Hampton speed viber, polyvalent ASV is ineffective in India. No, it is effective in India also. According to Drugs and Cosmetics Act, which we have discussed, spurious drugs causing death will be punishable minimum for life sentence. For a spurious, if a drug is spurious, that is, it does not perform the act action which is supposed to perform, okay. If it, there is some adulteration, then the, the, the death, the punishment for producing a spurious drug which caused death is life imprisonment. It is life imprisonment. Next, moving on to the next question. What can be commented on the cause of this person's condition in the image shown? In this image, you can see that this is a victim of acid attack or vitriolage, right? So, vitriolage or acid, that is a corrosive. So, this is a corrosive injury. There is no blunt injury or injury by sharp weapon, okay? It's a corrosive injury and this is punishable under section 326 IPC, 326A and B. Which of the following are toxins? What are toxins? These are produced by biological organisms. Right, heavy metals are not toxins. Atropine, yes, it is produced from Datura, so it is a toxin. Colchicin, yes, it is a toxin. Curare, yes, it is a toxin, but arsenic is not a toxin. So, atropine, colchicin, curare, all are toxins. So, option B, A, B, C is correct. This is the right answer. Identify the following. As we see this image, we have shown this image, this is that of erythroxylum coca. And from the leaves of this plant, we get cocaine, which is a CNS, CNS stimulant drug. All of the following statements about the plant is true except what plant is this? This is nothing but nerium. Nerium is a cardiotoxic drug, cardiotoxic plant and it produces death by hyperkalemia. Okay. And all parts of plant are poisonous. All parts are poisonous. So, 
All of the following statements about the plant is true except causes AV block, yes, this is true. Atropine is antidote, yes, atropine can be used as antidote. And uh, only root is poisonous, no, the entire plant is poisonous and it is of sweet test, right? Next, match the following columns. Again, they have asked to match the following columns. Heroin is also known as brown sugar. So, heroin, which is obtained, uh, which is actually a semi synthetic derivative of uh, morphine, so that is also known as brown sugar. So, A is 4. Then, B, Spanish fly, it is also known as blister beetle and it produces cantharides. And then, C, abras. Abras is commonly known as gunchi. And D, aconite is basically known as blue rocket also. Alright, so the correct order is A4, B2, C1, and D3. This is the correct sequence. All right. The specific sign seen, we have all seen this image repeatedly and this is seen in case of arsenic poisoning, chronic arsenic poisoning, also known as arsenicosis, arsenicosis. This is showing hyperkeratosis, hyperkeratosis of palms and soles. Black foot disease is also seen with arsenic poisoning. It is also seen with arsenic poisoning because there is vasoconstriction, there is vasoconstriction and there is peripheral gangrene and gangrene of foot. That is why this is known as black foot disease. Atropine is not an antidote in, atropine is not an antidote, antidote in which of the following? Tick 20, endrine, bagon and parathion, all are types of insecticides. All are types of insecticides. And out of this, atropine is not effective against endrine. Okay. Match the following, match the given drugs of abuse with their correct street names. So, street names of drug we have to know. Capsicum. Capsicum is related with Hunan hands. The people who use capsicum, the workers, the uh, laborers who pick up the capsicum, the farmers, they have got this particular thing and that is known as Hunan hand. Next, Abras. Abras is known as Gunchi. We have already discussed that. Cocaine. Cocaine is known as Charlie or White Lady or Cook. So, C1. And LSD. LSD is also known as Purple Haze. So, the correct order is A2, B4, C1 and D3. This is the correct order of answers. Raindrop pigmentation, we already saw the image. Raindrop pigmentation is seen in arsenic poisoning, especially inorganic arsenic. BAL is used as antidote. BAL is used as an antidote in the poisons of MAL. So, mercury, arsenic and lead. These are the poisons where BAL is used as an antidote. In cadmium and iron, it is not used as an antidote because the compound which BAL forms with these two, with cadmium and iron uh, plus BAL, this poison, this uh, compound itself is toxic. That's why BAL is not used in the treatment of these two poisonings. Meiosis is caused by, we have to know about the list of poisons which produce meiosis. Meiosis is or pinpoint pupil or constricted pupil. Meiosis or constricted pupil is produced by, constricted pupil is produced by organophosphorus, it is produced by carbamates, both are insecticides, it is produced by aconite, where we have or hippus, there is alternate dilatation and, uh, uh, and uh, constriction. Datura produces pupillary dilatation and cyanide also produces pupillary dilatation. So, A, B, C are the correct answers. A patient with recent history of convulsion presented with ER in a subconscious state with BP 90 by 60, bradycardia and slow gasping respiration. There is increased lacrimation, sweating and salivation. So, on examination, there is pinpoint pupil. There is a typical finding in case of an organophosphorus poisoning, which is an anticholinergic poison. So, all the, uh, all the secretions of the body will increase. All right, because uh, it acts on the anticholinesterase enzyme and it acts uh, as, uh, and it acts on the anticholinesterase enzyme. So, it acts by increasing all the secretions of the body. So, the answer is which of the following poisoning should be suspected? In this case, organophosphorus should be suspected. Okay. Sui needle. Sui needle is derived from Abras precatorius. Abras precatorius and this is made of rati seeds. Rati is the common need of, name of Abras precatorius. Magnan syndrome is seen, a magnan symptom is basically tactile hallucination. Magnan symptom is tactile hallucination and this is seen with cocaine. It is also known as cocaine bugs. Cocaine bugs. Which of the following combination are correct? Castor seed is not poisonous when consumed unbroken with cover. Yes, this is correct. Castor seed is only poisonous when the seed is crushed and the uh, upper cover is removed. Neem excessive can neem excessive can cause renal failure as it is nephrotoxic. So, this is also true. 
Datura is a neurotoxic poison. Yes, this is true. CNA, cannabis is CNS depressant. No, cannabis is CNS stimulant. So, the options A, B, C and true. Fishy odor. Fishy odor is associated with zinc phosphide poisoning. Fishy odor is associated with zinc phosphide poisoning. And hydrogen sulfide is producing a typical rotten egg smell. Arsenic poisoning typically produces garlic odor. Okay. Acrodynia or pink disease, acrodynia or pink disease where uh, it usually occurs in children and there is pink fluffy peripheries, pink fluffy peripheries and this is associated with chronic mercury poisoning, chronic mercury poisoning also known as hydrogyrism, hydrogyrism, okay. Speedball. Speedball is a combination of two drugs. Speedball is a combination of heroin plus cocaine. It is a combination of heroin with cocaine. So that is known as speedball. When uh, heroin is combined with strychnine, heroin plus strychnine, that is known as hot shot. Hot shot. In which of the following poisons, spinal cord is preserved? Spinal cord is preserved in case of a spinal poison. So what are the spinal poisons? We have strychnos and we also have gelsemium. These are spinal poisons. So, the answer is gelsemium. Tall tinted T wave. Tall tinted T wave is seen due to hyperkalemia and this is seen with mesobuthus. What is mesobuthus? It is nothing but scorpion. So, in case of scorpion sting, we see this tall tinted T wave. A patient of poisoning has been admitted with features of titany. Titany means there has been some sort of hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia is produced by the, uh, by the uh, inorganic acid, oxalic acid. So, that is the answer in this case. And the treatment of choice is by calcium gluconate. That is given in case of oxalic acid poisoning. In hydrofluoric acid poisoning, which of the electrolyte abnormality is not seen? In hydrofluoric acid poisoning, we have hypocalcemia, we have hypomagnesemia, we have hyperkalemia, but we do not have hypernatremia. That is the answer. Calcium gluconate can be given in which acid poisoning? Calcium gluconate, as I already discussed, that it can be associated when there is hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia. So, in hypocalcemia, which is produced due to hydrofluoric acid, we can give calcium gluconate as a treatment. Bilvanol is derived from Bilawa. Bilvanol is derived from Bilawa, and Bilawa is the scientific is the common name of semicarpus anacardium. This, which is marking nut, it is a plant irritant poison which is not seen in sulfuric acid poisoning. In sulfuric acid poisoning, we have black colorization of stomach, there is per perforation of stomach and there is white colorization of stomach, chalky white teeth, chalky white teeth and black colorization of stomach. But gray colorization of stomach is not seen in case of sulfuric acid. Gray slate gray mucosa is seen in case of mercury poisoning. And also in case of HCL poisoning, we get a buff colored appear of, of stomach intest and intestine. Itai itai disease or ouch ouch disease is associated with chronic cadmium toxicity. All right, mercury toxicity produces acrodynia, lead toxicity produces uh, plumbism, uh, and uh, arsenic toxicity produces arsenicosis. Pinpoint pupils are seen in all except. Uh, pinpoint pupil are seen in all except. Opium poisoning, OPC poisoning, pontine hemorrhage, cocaine overdose. Opium poisoning will produce pinpoint humil. Or OPC poisoning will produce pinpoint pupil. Pontine hemorrhage will also produce pinpoint pupil. Pinpoint pupil is not produced by cocaine overdose because it produces mitriasis. It produces mitriasis. A 32-year-old woman presents to ER with history of ingestion of crushed plant seed. She was treated with stomach wash and activated charcoal. She is at risk of developing which of the following electrolyte disturbance. This is basically speaking about nerium and in nerium there is chances of formation of hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia, that is the answer here. Gastric lavage is allowed in which poisoning? It is allowed in case of uh, paint thinner, Lysol, crude toilet disinfectant ingestion and battery acid ingestion. Battery acid is actually alkali. So, there we do not, it is a corrosive, so we do not do this uh, gastric lavage. Crude toilet, that is HCl, so we do not do. Lysol is phenol, that is carbolic acid. We can do this gastric lavage in case of carbolic acid poisoning because it leads to formation of thick leathery mucosa of uh, the esophagus and stomach. Esophagus and stomach. So, that is why and pain thinner ingestion is also uh, gastric lavage cannot be done because it is also a corrosive. So, lysol ingestion we can do gastric lavage. 
the most widely used substance dependence causing drug substance dependence causing drug the most widely used is cannabis cannabis produces substance dependence but this is a uh, physical dependence it does not produce uh, uh, this is a psychological dependence it does not produce physical dependence and that is why it is not a hard drug the poison commonly detected in exhumed bodies we know that is arsenic and this is known as post mortem imbibition all of these are heavy metals lead mercury cadmium all are these heavy metals but only arsenic is detected detected in exhumed bodies Magnan syndrome, this is a repeat question. Magnan syndrome is seen with cocaine and these are known as cocaine bugs. Cocaine bugs, there is tactile hallucination. Gastric lavage is contraindicated in all of the following poisoning except in phenol, it is not contraindicated. It is contraindicated in sulfuric acid, kerosene and nitric acid. This is the only case where gastric lavage is allowed. Which metal results in saturnine gout? Saturnine gout occurs in plumbism. Saturnine gout occurs in plumbism that is due to lead, chronic lead poisoning. Bluish discoloration of gastric mucosa. Bluish discoloration of gastric mucosa is seen in case of cadmium poisoning. Okay. It is not seen in mercury, arsenic or amytal sodium poisoning. Which of the following is false about snake bite management? This is a repeat question which has already been discussed. So we see that in this case in toxicology, what are the most important areas which have to be covered? The important areas are the important areas in toxicology which needs to be covered are specifically the classification of poison okay there are several lists classification of poison then lists of hypostasis typical smell of different poisons then appearance of gastric mucosa gastric mucosa in case of different poisons then list of antidotes then particularly poisons such as snake bite, the entire management, the corrosives uh, in treatment portion, we need to know gastric lavage, where it can be done, where it cannot be done. That has been repeatedly asked and also snake bite and also the common neurotoxic drugs, neurotoxic drugs and all the heavy metals. These are the areas from which repeatedly questions are coming in case of toxicology.